Welcome everyone to this newest installment of our Meet the Wedding Vendor series. Today we have a wedding rental company, Lindsay Martin. Welcome. Hey. Hi, Megan Hopper. <laughs> so excited. Thank you for being here. So Lindsay Martin of Caroline's Rentals. That's not your name. How did you come up oh. with your name for your business? Yes. Great question. I have to start here. Caroline is my grandma. So that's how this all started. She just always collected things, trinkets, goodies, vases, candlesticks. Her house was always full of things, pretty things. We used to make dried flower arrangements at her house, all the fun things little kids do. And so anyway, our collection started with her things. We kind of dabbled in a little bit before we wanted to do dive into it. So she had it as Caroline's rentals because it was hers. And then over time, when it, all the items moved to us, we just decided we had to keep her legacy. So it stays here because most of the treasures that are out here in our shop are hers. Yeah. That's where it all started. So Caroline is my grandma. And I've met her a couple of times. She is a lovely, lovely woman. Yeah. If you know her, you actually call her Nan. Yes. So you get to call her Nan. I do get to call her Nan. I love yeah, Nan. And she still loves to shop. <laughs> oh, well, that's important. How do you get all of your rental? So most of them came from Nan, came from Caroline. Yep. But do you shop for more regularly? Yep. We're always buying. The way we buy is different for every piece, you know, just like everyone else, Facebook marketplace, thrift shops, Amazon, all different kinds of online places we would go. But yeah, so she still is out shopping regularly, pretty much every week. Um, she might find one candlestick here, some chargers there. So she might finds most of the small items, whereas we'll do more of the big purchases for larger pieces. Custom builds we do as well. So my husband ends up building a bunch of different things, bars and shelving units and things like that. Does he so, like yeah. that? Does he like like he getting it. his creative outlet through yep. you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, a few years ago, moved our shop to a bigger space. It used to be in our barn. The barn now has become his workshop. I bet so he loves having he, that back. Yep. So he got his barn back and just grew it to be bigger, bought more, bought more tools. This summer he built farm tables. So yeah, he comes from a construction background. So this is the way he can kind of still stay in it, dabble in building, but we get to pick and choose what it looks like. Now, do you feel like you two own the business together or is it still kind of like your business, but he kind of helps? Yeah, I'd say it's more, I mean, hmm, he would say, I I think I would say it's ours. He would probably say it's mine and I drive it and he Supports. comes alongside however needed. But I need his brain for a lot of things or just to talk through, you know, financial parts of it or different aspects of the business. So I would usually say that it's ours. So you're more of like the creative side of it, seeing like the vision of Caroline's rentals, whereas he's more of the analytic and build stuff side. Yeah. Yep. I would say that's up. That's true. And he's in currently in kitchen sales. So mm -hmm. it's even fun for us to like talk through trends that are happening in like interior design in a home um, and in weddings as well. They're not always the same, but there are some things that kind of align just kind of what people are buying, what they see, what they like, where the, you know, trends are out West and then they're coming here. Is that how it works? Does it start in the West and move East? I feel like, yeah, the bigger cities out in California, you know, like a trend we might see here for decor maybe started out there three years ago. Huh. Yeah. So it's fun to follow their Instagram accounts and see what they're buying in terms of furniture and whatnot. And yeah, that's really, and he would say that's similarly true for like kitchen design. Now, yeah. do you ever retire items that are like out of trend now or and just kind of like put it on the back burner for now until maybe it comes yeah. back around? So, well, yeah, there's a lot of collections that, um, smaller pieces. So like white vases and candlesticks that I would have a hard time getting rid of because they were Caroline's like they mm -hmm. would have started as Nan's pieces but yeah it does come full circle bigger things I do have to make those calls sometimes just because we can't hold them all <laughs> I can't let you know a big couch sit and not get used for two years just because I think it might come around do you still have the pink couch from yes back the day? do you yes, I do. yep and it still goes out it's a popular piece I think just because the color palette and it is it's a beautiful piece can you tell listeners what life was like maybe like five years ago versus now, how has your business grown over the years? Oh, yes. So business five years ago was everything crammed in our barn. 
which was behind our house. Um, we did not have water access out there. So every week we'd have to pull all the dirty things into our house oh. to wash them, clean them. Most times they never went back out to the barn. They stayed in our house. So it was a little bit more smothering. Our kids were younger. They were home all the time. There's more, you know, glass around that they were wanting to see what was in boxes. And so it was a little more stressful, <laughs> but now we have a new space. I can separate home and work a little bit more. I get to go to work instead of it just being in my backyard. But yeah, so it was very different. I, we was hustling, you know, trying to get your name out there any way you can just to have people see your things so they could rent them. Now you can sit, I can sit back a little bit more, know that business will come, but I don't need to chase it all the time. Yeah. I remember sitting in, we were sitting, the kids were playing in a playground one time. We, yeah. we met because one of us, I can't remember which one had messaged the other and said, you have a son named Finn too. Mm -hmm. And so we connected on the fact that we both had a Finn and then we realized we had kids relatively the same age. So we decided to get together at a park and yep. we just connected. We were both very early on in our businesses. And there was a lot of like, well, how are we going to troubleshoot this? And like, how in the world do I have time for that? So yeah. tell everyone, how many kids do you have? So we have four kids. Our oldest, she'll be 15 soon. Um, our oldest is a girl, which has been very helpful in a lot of ways in terms of babysitting. And she's more organized and a little more structure in her life than our Finn, who's next. So we have a girl, boy, girl, boy. And then the youngest is seven. Yeah. So they're growing up with the business, which has been fun to see. Sometimes they don't like it. They don't like being here, but then other times they love it when they get to have, you know, a birthday party and our daughter gets to come and pick out whatever she wants for her birthday party. I bet your kids have the coolest birthday parties in the world. Yeah. Well, and it's hard for me. So I, we try not to have that many because I can't just do it, you know, small. Our third born Edie, she just turned 10 this April. So she had her big party here at our shop where we set it all up and it was all glitzy and we got, you know, hair, um, tinsel in our hair. <laughs> well, that's messy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now our oldest, she's starting to do more. They can help me with deliveries. You know, their arms are a little stronger. They can physically, they're physically able to maneuver around a little bit more. How was it like building when they were young though, when you were building your business, what was that like? And I guess if yeah. you could give some advice to somebody who's just starting their business and has young kids, whether no matter what their business is, it doesn't have to be rentals or photography, but Starting yeah. out a business as a busy mom, do you have any advice for people? Yeah. Oh, that would be a tricky one because sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't think I did it right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yeah. Let, I mean, letting them help. I mean, that's there's so many limitations to that, but like they could help clean chargers. Um, they didn't do it well. I had to redo it. Um, they drop, you know, candles, candles or like, um, votives on the ground and they shatter getting them a little more excited about what's kind of going on and invested in your life i think explaining to them how being having our own business can help them or how it, it um it changes our family dynamic so mom actually gets to be home more mom doesn't have to run off to work every day from nine to five they'll get to have family dinners together because i can you know cut out of work and then i can go back to work at night if i need to mm -hmm. um yeah, but the hustle was real. It was when they are napping, when they're sleeping, when they're entertained by the TV, mm -hmm. you're doing the work mm -hmm. um, and you fit it in when you can. And I think the biggest thing that was helpful for us was Nick and I, Nick's my husband, having open communication about just what our expectations were um, in terms of like what my work-life balance was going to be. Yeah. So that was helpful just to engage engage each other so we're on the same page and we're working towards the same thing there were many times where it was like i don't think i should be doing this <laughs> um but yeah and then at those points maybe he was stronger in the moment and no you're doing a great job like um let's keep pushing towards this you love this, this is your passion you're having fun doing it it's just you kind of get stuck in these ruts it's you know like all of life hills and valleys but i think one of the biggest things for me was starting out i chased what other people were doing mm -hmm. because I thought that's the way it had to be done. Um, so maybe I'm following another rental company in Virginia or like somewhere else on Instagram and seeing what they're doing and thinking that's how I had to do mine. <gasps> I got to buy that couch. I got to buy this. Well, I don't have a thousand dollars to buy that, but I need to buy that. Whereas you can make your business what you want it to be. 
Um, and that's the freedom of living in America. If you see something that people are flocking to, like there is something there that you can grow. Yeah. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but I love it. Yeah. Love and it. is it is that true for you in terms like with photography? Like how do you be Megan without, you know, chasing what everyone else is doing? I tell the story to my students quite often. Um, I don't speak publicly about it too much, but in the very beginning stages of my business, I didn't actually follow a lot of photographers. I was a busy mom. So I started my business when my third child was born, my Finn. I remember spending my days with babies in my front pack, trying to like reach over them to type on the computer. And I had, you know, this little tiny desk. I was stretched too thin to really spend the time researching other photographers. I just kind of yeah. started doing it and figuring it out on my own. I think um, probably two or three years in, I thought I was like making it. <laughs> you know, I thought I like knew what I was doing and I was making it. And then I started once I had more time and the babies were growing up, I had more time to start following other photographers. And I realized, oh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of other photographers in the same space. Wow. Yeah. And I started feeling those same pressures of like, well, wait a minute, I do it this way, but like everybody else does it this way. Maybe I need to do it that way. Yeah. And there was a lot of push and pull back and forth about whether I should change the way I do it or whether I should, you know, just stick to my guns and do things the way I thought I should do that. You know, I, I would change things one way and then bring it back. Like, no, that's not really me. And that's kind of the fun part of owning a business though, don't you think, Lindsay? I mean, like yep. we get to make the calls. We we can customize our lives. I mean, that's that's really, in my opinion, like what it's all about. It's all hard. Whether you go to work nine to five and have to come home and pick your kids up at daycare, that's hard. Building a business is hard. Working the nights and the weekends and the this and that, but there's really nothing that can replace being there when they get off the bus, not having to do daycare. And I recently reposted to my stories, something that somebody had posted about, you know, you choose your heart and what fits in your family. The communication is so important. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> you, but I, your husband is super supportive. And so is mine. We're very lucky. We have amazing husbands, but you know, like in the very beginning, you were taking over your Nan's business, basically. Yeah. So it was kind of already set and it was like a set thing. For me, it wasn't a business at first. It was just like kind of trying to do this thing on the yeah. side and to actually kind of put my stake in the ground and say, I have a business now and I'm going to take it seriously was probably the hardest thing for me. I don't know about for you, but you know, yeah. to actually well, say, I need the time to work and this is going to be the time that I'm going to work and having that communication over like, well, when you get home from work, I'm going yep. to go and be on my computer and you are going to have the children. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very true for any like entrepreneur um, that there comes a time where it be isn't a hobby anymore. It is a business mm -hmm. and, it, and it becomes a business way before you think it does. I think in your head, I think you're yeah. right. Like you like letting go and being like, no, this is a business. And even to um, like releasing some of the tasks in a business uh, to someone else like that kind of, they play a part in it too. So what have you given to other people? What are you not doing anymore? A uh, cleaning things. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. We don't think about that. When we think about the rentals, we don't think about the fact that you have to wash things when they come. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They come back so nasty. I mean, candle wax is our arch nemesis. My mom. Uh, so it'd be like Caroline's daughter and then my mom, um, Wendy, she comes in one day a week and she just scrubs the heck out of things. Yep. So she cleans houses for a living. And so um, she loves when glass is clean, when like yeah. it sparkles. So it's a perfect fit for all our things that go around candles. Oh my gosh, you're so lucky. I love that so much of your yes. family is involved in your business. That is such a beautiful thing. Ugh. It is. Oh man. Yeah, so I'm often like, oh, what happens if Wendy's not here? <laughs> yeah. Do you call your mom Wendy? Uh, no, just other people. In my phone, she's still mommy. Of course. Of course. Yes. You know, I've done a little bit of interview malpractice, and I haven't actually asked you to explain what your business exactly does. I feel like wedding rental is pretty self-explanatory, but can you take listeners through kind of like what all you provide and what you do, who you serve, and how it works? Yes. 
Oh yeah. I feel like wedding rental is kind of, it's not new. It's been around for a while, but in terms of like our parents' generation to us, it's new. So when it comes time to plan a wedding, um, most times it's people in your environment that you're asking for advice. Like you, I got engaged. What do I do now? And a lot of times you're working with your family. A lot of times it's not on your radar that you can rent items. Um, so you think like, okay, I'm going to book the venue. I'm going to book the photographer. I'm going to book the caterer. I'm going to book all these things. And then you go, oh, wow, I have to make it pretty. And that's where you kind of get to this lane of like, you start to source things or like look at prices. Maybe your florist provides some things. Mm-hmm. Um, most times I think the way people hear about us is through word of mouth, um, whether that we're on a venue list or a photographer list or someone else's like preferred vendor list. Um, because I don't think people always know that this is a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They start shopping for stuff and realizing like, oh my word, I'm going to spend so much money. Um, then it's going to come and it's not going to be the thing I thought it was. And then I'm going to have to take it to the wedding, whether that's at a venue or a backyard or wherever. I have to take it there. I have to unbox it. I have to put it out. Oh, and then I have to bring it back. And then I got to do something with it then. I got to put it in my closet. Yeah. So once they start to dabble in that and understand all that goes into a wedding in terms of just making it pretty, that's usually when we come into play. So the way we work is um, we have a whole warehouse shop full of pretty things. Um, Anything from like a candlestick to a dinner plate to a goblet to flatware you'd eat with. Um, Signs, arbors, bars, chairs, couches, rugs, like the sky's the limit. They come here um, and you can either pick out, you know, you can shop online and pick out your items. You can come here and pick out your items you want to use. We kind of reserve your items for your day. And then you can either opt for self pickup where you come pick it up the Thursday, Friday before your wedding, you take it out, you use it, make it all pretty. Then you bring it back to us. You bring it back, you bring it back dirty. On come Monday, like after all the weddings, we have all these things to clean. We also offer delivery. So there's a lot of weekends. I think this weekend we have eight weddings that we're delivering the items to. Wow. Uh, yeah. So like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll be on the road with our teams and our vehicles taking pretty things to, I'm trying to think of where we're going this year, this weekend. We're going to York. We're heading into Maryland because we can, we try to stay within an hour of where our location is, but that can kind of take us to Philly. That can take us to York, into Berks County, into York. Um, can't think of where else we're going. This, we're going to Lidditz twice. Mount Joy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll be all over the county this weekend, delivering things in the morning, taking them, dropping them off. Um, sometimes we'll use our setup service where you can buy for us to take them out of the boxes and put it out and make it all pretty. Sometimes there's already a coordinator or a planner who's doing that for you. I love um, when you do it and I don't know that you're doing it. So when I show up as the photographer and you're like, Megan, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I get to see you it's so fun yeah so sometimes it's hard for us because we will most likely deliver it in the morning or like lunchtime and not all the other wedding vendors are there the whole place doesn't get set up yet so maybe even the florist might not arrive till two um, and by then we're gone so we don't get to see it like come into fruition and like see the whole pretty picture um, so we rely on photographers heavily, like Megan, who can sh- share their images with us later. And we can be like, oh, it turned out so nice. Yes. Because by the time we come back at night to pick it all up, it's usually like. It's a mess. A burn. <laughs> yeah, everything's pulled apart and it doesn't look the same. And by then we're just like starting to box up our stuff to take it home. Um, now, do, do things get ruined? I mean, I'm sure they do, but like, do like things get torn and like unusable? Do the clients have to pay for that? Or is it just kind of part of your business expenses that you expect to happen? Yeah, there's some that are minor that we expect to happen. Um, Bigger things, um, like for instance, a whole glass of wine being spilled on like a light linen couch. Yeah. That's at the client's expense. And they hope that we can clean it out (laughs) rather than have to you know, pay to replace it or have it reupholstered. And then does uh, Wendy, does Wendy do that? Does she like, yes. it? and then, okay. I say, mom, can <laughs> you please come today? There's a wine stain on the couch and I don't want it to soak in. And then what yeah. would happen if that couch was supposed to go out the next weekend? Like, do you have to like scramble to 
replaced yeah. it or has that There's ever happened? A few times that that's happened, um, happened before with rugs. Mm -hmm. um, they were getting used outside and the ground was really wet and dirty and then people were dancing on them. So mm -hmm. it was just pounding it in. So they came back on a Monday and it was like, oh no, these go out on Friday. So we call a rug cleaner. Can we get these in? And it was a pretty penny. <laughs> I'm to sure. get them cleaned, but they got cleaned and we got them back for the following weekend. Yeah. So, and that's where it becomes um, really resourceful that my husband can fix things. So it can be like, how can you adjust this item or switch up this other piece to make it look like this piece so we can replace the item? Mainly glass is what gets broken. What's your yeah. favorite piece to set up and have? Like what, what is your favorite piece? Yeah. Hmm. Tablescapes are uh, one of my favorites. Nothing is my favorite without flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually tell people that if you look like if you come for a visit in our shop most of the things that you see here are like hard they're hard surfaces they're furniture you know there might be upholstered pieces but like everything's kind of hard the way you add like softness and elegance to something is through texture and what you can do with like linen and fabric um, but flowers add that softness so no matter what I set up if it doesn't have flowers it's kind of like oh it needs to be elevated. Like the, it needs true. the floor to elevate it. Yes. That's why I love all the vendors coming together. Like everybody's needed, you know, yeah. we need your rentals, you need the florals, and then you need the photographer to take pictures of it all. Yes. We have to relive it. I may have to show the prettiest to everyone else. And then they want to do it too. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, at this point in your career, you've kind of gone up through the ranks quite a bit, you know, you're, rather well known in our area. Um, I would probably say you're the most widely used rental company in our very large area. Mm -hmm. um, do you, I don't know where I was going with that because I just wanted to like make sure everybody knows just how amazing you guys are. Oh, um, again. You're welcome. But what is your favorite, what's your favorite part of being a business owner? Honestly, like what, what keeps you going through all the really hard seasons? We're about to hit fall. Fall gets yeah. really hard. For all of us, it gets really busy. What keeps you going through it all? And do you ever still have moments when you're like, I don't want to anymore. It's over. <laughs> yeah, I have those moments. Um, I'm learning vacation is very, very vital. So like this past weekend, we didn't have anything on our calendar. And I said to my husband, I'm like, we, we have to go. We have to go away. Like, Because when I can go away, I can take this and I can put it away and I can close this laptop and I can be away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very vital for, you know, the health of any human being to have rest and reprieve. What excites me about still doing this is um, the joy I see on people's faces when I set up something pretty. So to me, I see it all the time. It doesn't have, a, it's still beautiful things, but I'm immersed in it all the time. So it doesn't like, oh, I can't always look at something and go, but when you do that for someone else and they see you or they write you a review or they tell you how amazing it was to work with you or something like that, that brings me joy. And of course, it's fun to see all the pretty things and follow the design and all that. Yeah. Uh, it's kind yeah. of feel good to also like financially help support your family too. You know? Oh, yeah. I, oh, yes. I feel like it's given us so much more freedom just to go on those vacations, get yeah. away, have time to be with each other more rather than me working, you know, 50 hour job and Nick as well. And, mm -hmm. and those days when like, you don't have a single day in a whole month where somebody isn't homesick. Like sometimes I think about those months because they happen every year. There's always like one month where like somebody's always homesick yeah. and how in the world you would have to handle that going to a job. Oh my gosh. That would be so hard. Yeah. So hard. So hard. Mm-hmm. It's still hard even to get hear. our work done while they're home. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but we can. But that, we can yeah, do we it. Can. Yep. They can lay their little head on your lap. Mm -hmm. Not feeling well while you have your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Just one final question. If you could go back in time and start over again, like what would yeah. you do differently from the start? I think mm. that would be something valuable for people to kind of take away. Because I know there are some things I think I would do differently. But... How about for you? Yeah. What would you do differently from the start? Oy. It's hard because I feel like sometimes you look back at the past and you're like, you can, rem you either remember, depending on maybe your mood, remember all the bad 
Where like now I'm like, I feel like I'm in a good season that I look back and I'm like, oh, I'm remembering the good. Yeah. <laughs> I need to remember the bad too. I mean, the way when you start a business, it is like your baby. I don't know how to put less value in that. But I think that it would have been a good lesson for me to put less value in that. I don't hold them at the same level as my own children, but it was there was times where it was suffocating because I held it at such a high level. It was my responsibility to uh, grow this thing, to nourish it, to do everything you do for you know a plant, a human being. You got to water it. You got to put it in sunlight. You got like all the things. But if I could have let go of like you know some of them, mm -hmm. but then I look at that part too, and I'm like, but that maybe help drive it to where it is. Yeah. Would you have uh, been so successful if you hadn't done all those things? Right. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. So yeah. balance, I mean, even talking, I mean, having other like business owners like you talking with each other, like even if they're ahead of you in the game or behind you in the game, just open dialogue about like what it's feeling like for you or what, you know, where you're at, I think is so helpful. That's such a good even point. Having community. Community. Yeah. community at the end of the day is so powerful. Yeah. It's so hard to like think, well, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to be embarrassed, but honestly, we all have those moments. <laughs> we all yeah. think that everyone and starts somewhere. You, and the more you can get around other people and see that everybody else feels the same way. It's so beneficial. Yeah. And healthy to be in community with other people. Yep. And not even, it doesn't even have to be in your industry. I think you know, I can have dialogues with my husband and he works for an employer, mm -hmm. you know, he's not owning his own business and even hearing the camaraderie or the negative things that are going on with that culture of the business, um, just having an open mindset of listening and dialoguing about that is very helpful. Definitely. Like, listen, like this, listen to all Megan's teachings. <laughs> <laughs> Absorb it all. Oh, just a small little corner of the world, but I just <laughs> try so hard to help people see that there's different parts of all different walks of life. And it's so good to hear other people's perspectives and stories. I think oh, I yeah. find a lot of value in it. I really enjoy talking to people like you and hearing what made your business tick and how well, you and even from through. your client, like you, you learn so much about life and the world just walking alongside with a couple on their wedding day, I'm sure. Shooting oh, their absolutely. Wedding. Interactions with family, the dynamic that's been created. But even being a business owner, you're forced to be put in positions like that, whether it's with your clients or with other vendors or people in the community where you can be a light. Like hearing, um, you know, a mom and a daughter might come in here looking at things. I've seen some great mother-daughter relationships and I've seen some really bad ones, but how you can help mediate that even mm -hmm. in the moment, be a light to like, guys, if we don't need to fight over the cake stand, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The, like your, your marriage is what's coming here. And even though you're making, you're picking out pretty things, like it, it doesn't matter. In yes, the end. definitely. We try so hard to make sure our couples understand that their marriage is the most important part at the end of the day. Uh, we'll capture it all, but at, at the end of the day, we want you to be happily married and bringing two families together for the rest of your lives. Like it's, it's a huge, wonderful thing that we get to be a part of and learning to communicate better was probably the biggest learning curve for me. It wasn't the photography, but like anybody can learn to use a camera and things like that, but learning to communicate with all the people involved in the wedding day from the rental company, dropping off things to the venue, to the family, to the kids involved in the day. Like, you know, you have to be able to communicate with so many different people. And I really value the skills that I've learned along the way to be able to communicate with so many different people in one environment. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you have to change it up so fast. You can be talking yep. to a cute little flower girl and then all of a sudden somebody's having a meltdown over here and yep. being able to, like you said, be a light in somebody's day is just so valuable. Well, and now you're learning those traits and you're carrying them onto your children too. So like mm -hmm. you're creating a legacy that hopefully can carry on through lots of years. I love that. So many things that you can learn from being a business owner definitely would never trade it for anything in the world. Yeah. I'm with you. Same. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about today that I didn't ask you, or I didn't lead you there that you wanted to tell people about your business and your life? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that was a really like, good conversation. Yeah. I'll, I'll too much. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. <laughs> 
But thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I really, really appreciate you. Yes, thank you for having me.